Good afternoon, viewers and listeners to our British Business Podcast series. I'm delighted to welcome Paul Whitnell today. He's the founder and president of Bitter. All will be explained shortly. Welcome, Paul. Thank you ever so much for coming in today. Thank you very much for having me. Our pleasure. Wanted to ask you straight away how you got to the position where you are today in terms of business, but I'd really like to explore the journey of business that you've been on throughout your life. Could you start us on your journey? Well, I suppose if I cast my mind back to when I left school, um, one thing was said to me early on was to always follow your dreams and be true to your vision. And uh, I suppose that's something that I was always very passionate uh, about music. Um, I ended up being the band manager of the school band, Burning Embers. And, you know, we started from there in terms of watching other people's talents, but finding my own while doing so. And um, it was a great realization, keeping things simple, keeping everything simple. Um, and analyzing and listening uh, to everybody as I went and, and asking for their feedback. Um, so I suppose that was the foundation of, of, of where I started out. Um, I was involved in sales in Ireland, uh, in the construction industry. And while doing so, um, I loved my music. Uh, I was a band manager uh, for a couple of bands in Ireland. And then I got involved in politics, would you believe, uh, as director of elections for uh, a politician who is now in Europe, Billy Callagher, um, and I was involved with him for 25 years. So the combination of all three was where I kind of found that giving is a very important asset in life um, and do so uh, with integrity, with passion, with delivery. Um, and, and that's what I suppose um, the foundation of, of, of where that, that framed me. In 2008, I was forced to make a huge decision in uh, the economy in Ireland had crashed in the construction industry, uh, something I was very much involved in for 23 years. And I had a choice to make. Um, do I uh, stay put and uh, weigh this one out? Or do I reinvent myself um, and take the talents that I had uh, created over and the experience I created over years and bring them elsewhere? So I chose to jump on the plane, 75 pounds, Ryanair. <laughs> and when I landed in Gatwick, it was, will I go left or will I go right? <laughs> and I looked on the internet for uh, companies that were um, long-standing companies, but had experienced difficulty in, in, in terms of what they were doing. How old were you? Um, I, at this point in time, I was 43. With family? With family, with two boys. Um, so I had to go ahead of them, leave them, uh, and, and come over to the UK. And, and I'll never forget that first night in a bed and breakfast and wondering, what do I do now? And an amazing thing happened um, where I told my story to a taxi driver from going from Gatwick to Maidstone. Uh, which I was heading over to to do a job interview. And I told my story to this taxi driver and he was amazed. And he said, give this guy a ring. No. And way. I did. And his name was Pat Gallagher. And I did. And we went for a pint. And that's where it all began for me, where I thought it was very important to create a network ar around you of people. So when I came over... There was a difference in the culture, but there was a difference also in terms of approach. There was a gatekeeper, something that I was foreign to. And there was a cost of me trying to get beyond that gatekeeper. You couldn't at times, most times actually. So I was frustrated, it cost me, and I was con you know, constantly trying to figure out a way around this dilemma. So I started going out, networking and I joined a particular chamber and it cost me two and a half grand and after three to six months I realized I'm not getting anything back from this this is morally wrong so I'm not knocking chambers by the way sure. it was just I didn't have 
that kind of money to sure. spend. And it was that experience was costing me. So it was there and then that I dreamt up the vision of creating an organization that would facilitate others in their journey as I had experienced and make it easier for them to create the connections and build their own network that had values attached to it that were honesty, generosity, and a sharing nature attached to them. And this is what I decided to create when I created Bitter. And I'll always remember the first meeting was in Grosvenor Square, just not, not far away from sure. here. And um, someone asked me, what is Bitter? And I said, it's people who know people that help people. And they said, write that down, and we did. And now that's your strap line. And that became the strap line early on, but we lived by that strap line. Okay, so it's not just a strap line, it's your, it's everything. It's, a, it's everything. So with that, then we, we put a bit of thought into what are the values? What is the mission? What is the goals of the organization? And we begin to the journey of Bitter at that stage with a chapter that was made up of a chairman um, and a, a board of eight people that I had to explain what my vision was to them. And they all agreed that this is something that could be very beneficial and of value to others. So um, they said they'd come on board. And it's wonderful actually today that the London chapter has probably five of the eight are the original people 10 years later. So we created a chapter and it was all about people who know people that help people. Uh, the values were based on inte integrity, passion, uh, transparency, and delivery. So we say what we do. We do what we say. Okay. So we began to gather members. And the first thing we did when we met a member was we made them understand what the values of the organization were. And if it resonated with them, well, then they were a suitable type, type of candidate to, to join this community. Um, roll on 10 years, and we have 13 chapters within the UK and Ireland. Wow. And it's relevant in 13 countries now. And it's incredible when you see proper collaboration with all those values attached to it in terms of what one can do that rolls down into, you know, uh, social impact. So we're involved with people like uh, Weapons Down, um, the Power Day Foundation, bringing kids off the streets that had uh, got into a bit of a rut and giving them another chance sure. and utilizing the ecosystem to leverage that as an opportunity for them, guaranteeing them that opportunity and the mentorship that will bring them through the other side. And that was incredible. That's only one aspect of it. So Bitter became something that was had, had brilliant core values, uh, collaboration. We weren't exclusive. Um, and everybody started questioning, like, you know, how did you come up with this? And I was going, wasn't it obvious? Because I felt that my generation, and I'm 55, was responsible for the demise of better practice. Our generation were affected by technology coming in, making life quicker, faster, cheaper. And we literally step over each other. And those simple values that we were reared with, but my parents, about trust, honesty, integrity. You know, uh, if you threw away a sweet wrapper, you picked it up. Mm -hmm. Unfortunately, my generation, this was gone. And I seriously sat around considering ways that we could actually have an impact to actually create better practice. So BIDA um, is very much, that's the fundamental values that are within BIDA now. What does is, what is BIDA stand for? BIDA stood for um, the British and Irish Trading Alliance okay. before. But as we went international, that was confusing for yes. someone in America and Australia, but yep. they're not British or Irish. Yep. So BIDA today is BIDA International. Okay. So, um, again, it was an easy thing to change, uh, not by design, <laughs> <laughs> sure. because I suppose it was, as you said, it was a journey and it was only, you know, people now comment on how great the organization and the substance that it has and the benefits that it gives to people. Um, 
that was a journey I went on and it was the help of others made better. Not me. Yes, I, my passion drove it, but it was the help of others embracing what we had to do. And I'll always remember the first man that I walked into uh, was Ray Rourke from Langer Rourke. And I needed senior people who were respected in the industry to endorse what I was doing. So I walked into his office and I had a meeting with him to explain. Just before I went in, I asked his secretary, um, is there anything I need to know? <laughs> and she saw I had a laptop and she said, well, Ray doesn't do presentations. And of course I nearly choked. And um, <laughs> I then had to begin to, to tell Ray uh, the story in, in my own terms. And um, I continued to speak. He was poker faced sitting in front of me and expressionless. And I'm going, do I finish or do I continue? Am I saying the right thing? Am I saying the wrong thing? And then I just saw this wry smile and he reached out and gave me a thump in the chest and he said, good man. And one of the things wow. that I loved about this was last week we got to celebrate uh, our 10th anniversary in the Londoner and we do an awards. And I was delighted to be able to give Des and Ray O'Rourke a Lifetime Achievement Award, you know. And that was a, a kind of pinnacle moment for us in terms of how far we had come. But without the likes of those people, those great people who've been involved and created a fantastic industry that many people live off of, um, it was incredible. And seeing the integrity of that man receiving the award, because he doesn't do awards, you know, and this was, you know, these two men are just great men. And what they have in terms of capital knowledge in the industry is just unbelievable. Are you across all industry sectors? Do you like to think that it doesn't matter where you've come from, what you're doing, where you're going? You've got a home, there's a home for you or you could be part of this community. Yeah, the, the values are that. So um, naturally you get kind of drawn into uh, the construction sector was a, was a large sector for us because of the relationship between Ireland and the UK anyway. Sure. Um, but, you know, what happens is other sectors come into play and they find their place, biopharmaceutical tech, um, for, you know, especially tech in the construction industry was a very slow burner because people, it was a traditional industry, they didn't want to change. Um, so over time, bringing technology to the industry is giving great advances, giving great value. But it's that communication uh, is so important. And when that communication is delivered by someone who is trusted and, um, and has shown form in terms of the value and can show examples of where it's been successful, before, that's such a help. Um, it also saves companies time, expense of trying something that doesn't work when they can see or talk to someone uh, who has seen it working elsewhere. So it's that sharing of capital knowledge um, and wisdom and experience is so vitally important. So I suppose the legacy became more powerful to me then when I realized what we created, you know, the fun that we had in terms of, you know, we kept everything super, uh, simple. Kiss, you know, keep it yes. simple, stupid. And what we did was, you know, um, something that was needed. Um, we have a fantastic agenda in terms of sustainability. Um, so people talk about doing things, we actually do them. So we had created two years ago, um, the Be Plastic Aware campaign, where we educated and spoke and communicated to companies to put this on their agendas in the boardroom and make them aware that they had to do this. The younger generation are great at change. We're not so great. And this is where we brought in a focused area where you could actually see what Bitter was doing and see the benefits that Bitter uh, was, was giving. And, um, and today we've got a great sustainable activity within the organization where we're involved in the World Cleanup Day every year with five million people have now taken part in. And it's great to be part of that and a founding part of that. Wow. Um, so that sustainable side of things, you know, the circular economy. There's a brilliant company called Ocean R in Cork, a young man called Tom Cotter. And he was the epitome for me of, of the definition of the circular economy, whereby he 
collected fishermen's nets all over the world and plastic, converted it into pellets and made fabric clothing out of it. Wow. And that's the circular economy. A lot of people use buzzwords, but they don't know what it is. Yeah. So what we do is we create a definition in Bitter. Again, going back to the capital knowledge that we gather as we go. So the experiences might not necessarily be my experience. It's the experience of another. And that is communicated well within the organization that we can speak for each other. So I suppose that, in a sense, is valuable. So for me, now, what's very important is passing that down, that legacy down to others, that we've got to retain those values, that it is very important to create better practice, and that it saves people who are interested in money a fortune. So um, you've got to have the right people doing the right job. And what we are able to do is grow that activity, that culture um, within the Bitter community. And, and it's great to see that despite the fact we have borders, despite the fact you, know, you could have Australia, America, Dubai, the same values exist in every country. And it's easy to find a common pathway to actually communicate this. Be Plastic Aware was a great example of that because the agenda was the same in every area. And the communication became a great yardstick to actually show what Bitta was all about. Wow. <laughs> Humbling is what it feels like to me. Well, I, I don't see it. I mean, my back was against the wall. Of course. You know, so I don't see it like that. It was a case of um, we, we needed to do something about this. Uh, you, you, you see it today that, you know, in today's world, the things, there's price rises, there's cost rises, there's inflation, there's, you know, energy crisis, uh, there's wars. And as you get older, you realize that's the cycle of life. Mm. You know, I'll always remember when I was made redundant and I walked into my dad and I said, what am I going to do? I've just been re made redundant. And he said to me, go for a game of golf. <laughs> And I went into my mother and I said, that useless tool, you know, no, he's not a useless tool, but that's what I said to my mother. And what he meant was yeah. go somewhere where you can think, yeah. go somewhere where you enjoy the space that you have and you will figure out. And I came back and I said, dad, I'm going to the UK. And he said to me, what hole did that happen on? <laughs> Fantastic. He knew exactly. And that's what it is. It's listening to people and letting, let, you know, when you get to know people, whether it's a company or a family or a community, you know, it makes it so much easier. Communication is so much easier. You know, so we've got to realize that there's constant threat in the world, that we've got to come together as a collective because together we're stronger. If somebody was listening to this right now, and they wanted to get in touch. Do you have a website? Are you on LinkedIn? Is there a presence? How, how does that happen? All of the above. Um, the website is www.bita.ie. Uh, I'm on LinkedIn and I'm available to anybody because I love what this is and I love what I'm doing. And if it's for the betterment of others, well, then we need more of that in the world. You know, um, what I loved about your own business um, was your values resonate what BITA is all about. And it's great when you're on that journey and you genuinely meet people in that regard because, you know, there's a lot of fox dressed in sheep's clothing out there. Yeah. <laughs> and, you know, this is what I've kind of experienced where you get excited about things, but it takes you not a long time to figure out that they're taking on a different journey mm -hmm. in a different direction. So that's why it was very important for us to firmly establish um, what the values of Bitter are all about. And when you do that, you can't change course. No. You've got to be true to yourself and you've got to finish the job. So I suppose for me, finishing the job will be playing more golf, um, <laughs> but it'll actually be keeping the message simple, consistent, and delivering more value as time goes on. Because as time goes on, 
we gather more knowledge, we gather more experience. And it is passing that down to people who want to, can do, work quicker. Um, it's merging that together. So the younger generation are so important to this. So we've created Beta X, which is the next generation. And they have a different way of approaching things and doing things. And we will feed into that. And we hope then that they will feed from us in terms of our experience. Um, you know, going back to my dad and his wisdom to sit in the seat and say, just go for a game of golf. <laughs> Fantastic. We've had a particularly bad last two or three years. It, it seems to be continuing. We've had Brexit in the UK. We've had the pandemic. We've got this energy crisis. Politics seems to be in massive turmoil. Have you, and do you call them your members? Do you call them your friends? How, how, what do you? I call it an ecosystem and I call it a community. I call them members and I call them friends. So all of the above. It's all of the above. But what I've learned is, it, you know, no matter what happens, we're, we, these, this is the challenge of life. Yes. Yeah. And it's, it's when you make, you know, the team stronger, the community stronger, that's when you can actually overcome anything. And I'll give a great analogy. I went to Twickenham this year and um, early on in the game, England were down a man in the scrum. And despite that, they actually won the crowd and they got that man back. And at one point, I'm sitting there with an extra man from Ireland on the team and England are within five points of us. And I'm going, oh my God, it's bad enough being beaten in Twickenham but being beaten by a man down, <laughs> I won't be able to live here anymore, you know? And what it showed me is adversity is when you get that scrum together and when you work hard to keep that scrum together, you can actually win anything you want. I think that our viewers and listeners out there, a lot of them are young people who are aspiring to look for their own business. They may be in startups. And I think that, one of the things that I've listened to today, the takeaways for me at 55 years old, same age as you, is that we've been through life and getting to this point. We're not dictating to these youngsters. What we're saying is, and, and I'm pretty much sure that Bitter is like this, is actually speak to us, have a conversation, because we, we've seen a lot of stuff. So... You've been made redundant. It might be their first time that being made redundant. If they picked up the phone to you, you could explain what that felt like, but actually, in reality, what it was like. Do you have that ability within the network, within the community, to have those sorts of events? Do you get together regularly? Yeah, so like one of the things I want to address is, is the sense of value that you... So for a membership, you, you spend £500. And Which is not per, per annum. Per annum. Wow. So it's, it's affordable, first of all. But what I want to display, first of all, was the value that you get from that at the very get-go, the sense of value that you get at the very get-go. So what we did was, within the portal of the website, we set up a procurement hub, a training hub, a HR hub, a wellness hub, a shop, everything that is accessible for people in terms of value. So if you're setting up a small company, you have access to 800 documents in HR free of charge. So you get the sense that what I paid for, I'm already getting a return. And that's before you even start on your journey. So what we examine is people's cost, first of all. Then your position in the market. Who am I? What am I? Who am I talking to? What am I saying? What are they hearing? And all of the above, and we help them to um, create their own vision and create their own journey. Then we look at their blue sky and we say, if it's not within the ecosystem, well, let's bring it in. Hmm. Treat bitter like a Trojan horse, you know, and bring people into the fold who mightn't have time or the understanding of the organization. And until they get in there, that's when everything unfolds. So, Bitter can be utilized in that regard. 
bearing in mind when you're bringing people into the fold, you're bringing to a community of people who are full of integrity, full of tenacity, passion, delivery, experience, you know, experience. And, and it's, it's fun because life needs to be fun. We need to put more fun back into life. Wow. And that is what we've, you know, got now is we're not a member gatherer. We, we don't, you know, you will have, as I mentioned already, people who will take it on board and misunderstand it or want to take it a different way. We don't recommend better for them. <laughs> so we're, we, we're very selective in terms of who is suitable. If, it, but I, if I cast my mind back the day I landed, if I had an organization like Bitter to go to anywhere in the world, it would have fast-tracked my journey so much and cost me so little to do so and have that sense of camaraderie, support, friendship instantly around me. Mm. I'll always remember my first night in that bed and breakfast, you know, and it was like a lonely place. So it's taking all of that out. And it's replacing it with something that is functional and understandable very quickly. And when you meet people within the organization, you've met many, um, you can see that it's not just me. No. It's, 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 it's them. It, it, it's almost you morphed. It, it's like you everywhere. They've got what you created. Yeah, but it's the understanding yes. is what they, they, they yeah. got. So yeah. it's the understanding and that communication. And what we do then is we provide events from, you know, um, every chapter, everywhere in the world um, on a regular basis that they can touch base, communicate what they want, what they need. It's a brilliant story of a guy in Ireland um, that is not too well known in this part of the world, but he's a legend of an artist called Christy Dignam from Aslan. And as I said, I love my music and that was part of my history. So I got a phone call from Christy Dignam um, from a girl called Katrina Casey to say that Christy um, wasn't well, he's, he's dying of cancer, um, um, a rare blood disorder. And um, he had the inability to actually uh, play music anymore because all the uh, venues had closed down for COVID and he had a wish to make his last album, a uh, solo album. And I said to him, what is the album name? And he said, the man who wants to stay alive. And I went, oh my God. Wow. And I reached out and told people, strangers, that story. And that night they rang me back and said, we'll support this. So every member gave me a thousand pounds, 25 of them. A thousand pounds and I rang Christy back and I said make that album and he made the album and the album's an incredible album and then we went out can, can, to, you, can you tell it to say that again so the, the artist and the, the artist is Christy Dignam uh, the album is The Man Who Wants to Stay Alive and it's a fantastic piece of you know it's the mastery that he was and, and how long ago was that when that happened that was only six six months ago and that's so, happened it's been produced yeah. Wow. So, and it's available um, now, but the, the story of Christy Dignam is quite incredible. He's gone through an awful lot in his life um, and that's worth uh, reading about as well. Uh, but it's an example of reaching yeah. out yes. to an organization, yeah. you know, that we wouldn't be involved in the industry on a day-to-day -day basis, no. but that is people who know people that help people. Wow. And when we actually wanted to give the money back to the people who, who, um, contributed, um, they said, give it to the charity. So Christy was able to uh, give money to the charity as well. So since we've um, existed, we broke the seal this weekend that Bitta has contributed over a million pounds to charity in 10 years, which is, that makes me proud, oh. you know? And there's a substance behind, you know? So when I look at Ray, Sean Mulrine, Sean O'Driscoll, they're the people I ask for endorsement um, first up. When I look them in the eye now, I'll turn around and say, job done. Wow. What a great way to end this podcast. You've just been speaking for about half an hour. Feels like five seconds. Amazing. Guys, I'm literally lost for words. That was an amazing 
description of what it is that you have created through your foundation. Another amazing podcast, viewers and listeners, and until next time. Bye.